Hey, what's up guys? My name is Greg Lester and this is Game Audio Analysis. Today I want to do a deep dive on a game called Frostpunk, which I recently discovered. And since it's a kind of um, different take on the whole city builder genre, it was really interesting to see how they incorporated a lot of interesting sound effects into the menus and the UI, because oftentimes they're quite repetitive and Frostpunk did a really cool job on this, so let's jump right into it. Fighting the cold, that is the core of the game, and it's your job to build and govern the last city on Earth. You're faced with hard moral decisions and have to sometimes disregard the life of a few to save the life of many. The game is set in the Victorian era, and the aesthetic reflects this beautifully with detailed houses, animations, and particle effects. What really brings the game to life, though, is the truly heavy and authentic sound of this world. So in this episode, we're going to look at how the sound designers achieved this by really sticking to the seed of the game and utilizing some psychological tricks to emphasize the importance of the player's choices. We start working on a game, the first thing sound designers do is define the sonic direction in order to create an authentic soundscape which immerses the player and enhances the gameplay. We do this by looking at a number of things. What type of game is it? What time period is the game set in? What is the general aesthetic style? What is the mood of the game? What is the story of the game play out? And what is the story? From this we can put together a short list of keywords which will help us stay on track during the designing process and guide us, as well as create a list of elements we might need to record during pre-production. This is probably how the list of the sound designers of Frostpunk looked. Alright, so now let's get to the actual sounds. Small disclaimer, this is my personal guesswork and might not be 100% accurate. The ambience is split up into a general storm and wind ambience, which is just a stereo loop and can be heard pretty much at all times. Then we have some smaller, what I like to call detail ambiences, like for example the crowd noises and the hammer impacts when houses are being built as well as the deep rumble of the generator. These are all placed within the world as sound emitters and when we zoom in we can hear them. They're all directional, which means that when we move to the left side of the map, we will hear the generator in our right ear. Since Frostbunk is a city builder, we interact with a lot of menus during our playthrough, so it's important that it doesn't interrupt the flow of the game. What this means for the sound designer specifically is that they want the UI to feel very tactile and heavy and interlink with the feeling of activating machinery and authorizing buildings to be constructed. The sound team totally nailed that in my opinion, but my favorite sounds in the game are the ones in the lawmaking menu. The low cracking sounds are incredibly satisfying to listen to, but more than that, they actually play a psychological role. Whenever you open the Book of Laws, you are altering the fate of your citizen. So the decisions you make are critical and put a big burden on the player, because oftentimes doing the right thing might jeopardize the entire city, or you get the choice between two horrible things, both of which will make the lives of the citizen miserable. An example of this is that you have the choice between putting children to work because you simply do not have enough manpower to keep the generator running or allowing 24 hour shifts. The consequences of both of them are grave and there seems to be no right one. 
This element of heaviness was perfectly captured by the sound designers with the low cracking and rumbling sounds as they convey the weight of the decision and how incredibly morally dark they are. The human brain is hardwired to associating certain sounds with feelings. Researcher Stephen Porges says mammals react to low frequency sounds. Low frequency sounds are associated with danger. The growl of a predator is a low frequency sound. An earthquake produces low frequency sounds. We, like other mammals, automatically react and release stress hormones. On top of that, the cracks sound a little bit like ice splitting, which plays into the lore and the theme of the game. Ice splitting generally is another sign of danger, and standing on thin ice metaphorically means that a single mistake could mean the end. So to sum up, the sounds utilized in the Book of Loss psychologically create the feeling of stress and pressure, which in my opinion gives a sensation of responsibility and weight with each mouse click. But let's take a break from the analysis and try to create our own deep and dark menu sounds. The sounds of the law menu, like I already previously stated, sound kind of like ice cracking to me, but when taken apart actually consists of more mechanical recordings and elements. When isolating each band with an EQ, you can hear four prominent different elements of which this sound is made up. I personally can hear a low sub bass layer, a mechanical lever sound in the bass and mid section, a quicker high click and a jingle decaying in the high end, as well as the general ambience behind it. When recreating a sound, this is always a great approach, especially if you have no idea where to start, because by analyzing each band of the original sound, we can slowly pick apart the various layers and recreate them individually. How I approach my sound. I have multiple layers which make up each element and as usual I try to separate them into low, mid and high. But I struggled a lot with the bass at first because every mechanical sound I pitched down didn't have enough punch. So after some experimentation I used a rock impact that I pitched down an octave and processed with a multi-bank compressor and a low pass filter. To make it sound like this open close lever mechanic I time stretched it to the right length and put a volume envelope over it to emphasize the movement of the sound. This coupled with a drawer sliding shot and a weaving machine recorded by a friend of mine makes for a great mechanical lever impact sound. The higher elements, which make up the mechanical part, consist of different locks and doors closing. Underneath, I have a layer of gravel in the breeze, which sound like dust settling after the mechanic has been activated. The other sounds are created based on the same principle of splitting the layers up into the high and mid mechanics, low impact, and the debris as a tail. They all have some kind of movement, which is easily done by shifting the layers around on the timeline until you get a satisfactory result. In the background, I just sampled the wind from the game to create an underlying layer and make it sound like it would in the game. The effects I use to process all the sounds are basically just regular compression, multiband compression, EQ, and reverb. All of the compression really brings out the details in the sound and the EQ cleans it up so that the layers blend well with each other. Notifiers are repetitive distinct audio cues which play after certain actions or events and give the player information on for example an update in the game. In Frostbunk's case, these are the bell sounds after a new law has been signed and the horn sound when the workday ends or begins. New law. A new law has passed. End of shift. Go rest all you can. 
They are diegetic elements, which means that they can be heard by the civilians in the game world as opposed to extra diegetic menu sounds, which only the player can hear, and are backed up by the dialogue saying, a new law has been signed, or the work shift starts. Unlike sound design, the dialogue has to be translated into all different languages the game is playable in. So replacing dialogue with real sounds often saves a lot of work, especially in indie development. The problem with this is that sometimes instructions aren't as clear when using sounds as opposed to actual dialogue. The last thing we will be looking at is the music. Frostpunk's soundtrack is heavily dominated by a beautiful string section, including violins and cellos. The melodies are heart-wrenching, emotional, and sometimes even slightly hopeful. They do justice to the beautiful but deadly landscape of the game and the brutal, unforgiving conditions the population has faced. Sometimes the cello plays alone, which demonstrates the solitude of the city. The instrumentals are very ambient, and notes are sometimes held for a very long time. This, along with the lack of percussion and the sparse instrumentation, mainly sitting in the mid and higher frequencies, allows the score to perfectly meld with the ambient sounds of howling wind and the low rumble the fire of the generator emits. The score was written by Piotr Musial, and I will read a quick excerpt of him talking about the soundtrack. One of the important elements of the soundtrack is the music of the city. The ambient everlasting cold and matched in colors with the visuals in a way that it glues everything together. The city is meant to be a place of safety and relative comfort amidst a white frosty hell, but at the same time a potential mass grave if the player fails. My challenge was to make the player feel safety while warning him of the impending doom. At the same time, the music of Frostpunk focuses on the emotions of people that make the city. Simple, constantly evolving motifs performed by amazing musicians accompany the lives of the survivors and help tell their stories about moments of frustration, resignation, but also moments of hope, unity, or faith. It is this emotional element gradually building tension from calm solos, tutti strings, to the big stormy finale was the key to creating music that would become an important part of the game. All in all, I think that Frostpunk's soundscape is beautiful and well executed. It perfectly fits the game and really enhances the gameplay experience. The sound designers really outdid themselves on this one, and it was a pleasure to do a deep dive on it. Once again, thank you so much for watching. If you want to support this channel and get some cool rewards for it, then please head over to my Patreon. Link is in the description as always. See you next time and have a great day.